All right, YouTube, you probably all saw Clinton's speech today in which she briefly mentioned North Korea and then spent three quarters of her time just trashing Trump, which was, it's predictable. At this point, we know that she's going to do that. She actually took a few questions from the press. It was something new. We haven't seen this from Clinton before. For so long, she's been like the hermit queen, and she hasn't even talked to people in the press, but... Today, I guess she was in a better mood. She got an extra shot of her painkillers or whatever the fuck she's on and decided, oh, well, I guess I'm more talkative than usual today. My throat doesn't hurt from shoving something from whom Abedin down it. Uh, that being said, sounded like a bunch of fucking warmongering to me. Uh, I know that people often... I think the Republicans really shoot themselves in the foot when they do this, by the way. Republicans like to class the Democrats, so they're a bunch of hippie pacifists... Oh, they'll, they'll never defend our interests. No, quite the opposite. The Democratic Party has become the pro-war party. The Republicans right now are the less jingoistic of the two parties. Trump appears not to want to antagonize Russia, appears to want to primarily focus on the economic side with China, and as far as everything else is concerned, wants to scale back the sort of antagonism that the West has used for some time now. Uh, since certainly the, the so-called war on terror began uh, in regards to some of our geopolitical foes. And that's what they are. Obama in 2012 declared, oh, Russia's not a foe. Russia's not our enemy. The Cold War's over, you fucking moron Romney. And of course, Romney is a moron, but Obama at the time said Russia wasn't a foe. But what we've seen in the last six months is every time something goes wrong, Clinton blames it on Russia. Every time Trump mentions Russia, the press assumes that he's fawning over Vladimir Putin, even though he's quite clearly stated, yeah, Putin's not a nice guy, but he is admired and respected. And he's not wrong there. I, I hate to say this, but he's quite right. There are more Americans, I think, that uh, you know admire Putin than admire Obama right now. Now, I'm not saying that I buy into all of the stuff about Obama because some of it's blatantly false. But it is true that the way he's generally perceived is as a weak leader. I pointed out when sanctions on Russia began with the Crimea mess, that was a good move by Obama. He did no wrong. He was essentially grinding down their economy. It was the right response. Uh, I continue to believe that in that case, Obama was absolutely right. But the idea that people who praised Obama for doing so, would go after Trump as though he was a Russian agent because he suggests that NATO needs to be reformed is stupid. NATO does need to be reformed. The way that NATO operates doesn't work anymore. Now, I happen to believe there is still the threat of atomic war involving the Russians. There's probably a greater threat of atomic war right now with the Spratly Island bullshit that China's undergoing. China is probably now a bigger threat to the NATO alliance than Russia. I have to say that. Russia has a stagnant economy, uh, a decreasing military capability over time. It's capable of upgrading, but is it capable of fielding the kind of sheer manpower that it had before? No. It's no longer capable. It doesn't have the population. It doesn't have the economic output. It is doubtful that they will be able to continue maintaining all of the missiles they have. They're modernizing because they probably plan to scrap a good half of them and downgrade their stockpile. China, meanwhile, is building what amounts to stationary aircraft carriers in the Spratly Islands because it's cheaper than building a real aircraft carrier. This shows China's not really intent upon projecting its force, but it is intent upon claiming that chunk of ocean that the world doesn't want it to claim. This will come to a head eventually. And I will say this, Hillary Clinton does not have the demeanor or the strategic thinking involved necessary to deal with these problems because her answer is likely to be either do absolutely nothing and stay the course or bomb the fuckers that's likely to be what she does not certain but likely we've seen clinton's foreign policy she was the secretary of state what happened in libya let's ignore benghazi because you know everybody else is ignoring it now too i don't even give a fuck about it at this point but what happened in libya yeah, Gaddafi was overthrown. Okay, dictator gone. Supposedly a good situation. What happened thereafter? Collapsed. Egypt, rise of the Muslim Brotherhood. Oh, great, democracy in action. Finally, that 
uh, old evil military general tyrant is out of there. Oh, shit. Uh, their new constitution basically foregoes any sort of freedom whatsoever. Oh, the Muslim Brotherhood is gone again. Oh, whew. thank goodness. We dodged a bullet on that one. Can you imagine what would have happened if the Muslim Brotherhood had prevailed and the military hadn't gotten involved and Egypt had sunk into another uh, retarded Sharia state and really truly collapsed and become the next Saudi Arabia only with less oil? How much criticism there would be of Obama and Clinton over that? Thankfully for them, Egypt stabilized. Or Syria. Obama and Clinton and all of their ilk want to keep arming the FSA. The FSA is singularly responsible and the main reason why ISIS is in that country in the first place. ISIS would not be in Syria if Assad weren't being constantly molested by a bunch of Sharia law rebels that our government keeps giving weapons to. Now, the hypocrisy is astounding. Oh, well, we're, we're going to give them tanks and we want to take away assault rifles from Americans because Americans, somehow, they're scarier than a bunch of Sharia law lovers. So there's a little bit of hypocrisy there. But getting past that, though, we've seen her foreign policy. We also know Hillary Clinton has taken a shit ton of money from the Saudis, which means she'll probably warmonger after Iran and probably warmonger after Syria even more because you've got this Saudi-led, Pakistani, co-opted uh, sort of group within the Middle East that deeply opposes the Syrians, the Yemenis, and the Iranians, the Shias of the world. And by the way, which have managed to piss off Turkey so much that they're probably going to end up leaving NATO and joining the Russians at this point, which will fuck them up long term. Short term, though, it's going to fuck NATO up the ass. That's not a good thing. She takes money from China. Bubba Bill used to get all sorts of money from slush funds with their origins in China. Never got in trouble for it, even though he probably should have been rotting in a dungeon somewhere for it. Uh, but certainly, they're friends of the Chinese. When Hillary Clinton talks about launching a response to Chinese cyber attacks, she's fooling. Not actually going to do anything. Not going to do bullshit about China. Because the Chinese have bought and sold her and the rest of the Clinton family ten times over. As far as Russia goes, it appears that she had good relations at one time. Of course, she sold a majority of the Western uranium in the United States to the Russians and had no problem doing that because she likes money. She likes power. But now all she does is say, oh, yeah, there might be a military response if Russia does this. She won't do shit about China, I assure you. But as far as Russia goes, yeah, she might be dumb enough to try that. She might really be dumb enough to do that. She might also be dumb enough to get us involved in a ground war in Syria. Now, she can proclaim, oh, I would never do that. Hmm, that's funny. Obama used to pretend to be anti-war, too. And then he wanted to lob cruise missiles at Assad's forces while simultaneously getting our dicks involved in the civil war over in Syria in the first place. The Democrats are no longer an anti-war hippie party like they might have been in the early 70s. It's no longer the case. They are simply a bunch of neoliberals. They like foreign interventionism just as much as the Republicans typically have. Trump probably is, is significantly less warmongering. He apparently doesn't have that much of a problem with the Russians. So, you know, I don't think they're screwing around in our elections. You know what? On this, I'm going to say I, I agree with him. I don't think they are. I think that's a cop-out by the Department of Homeland Security to try to meddle in our elections. I don't believe them even a little when they say, oh, we've got firm evidence that it was Russia. Bullshit. Where's the evidence? Show us. Show us the evidence. Then show us that it wasn't just a rogue group in Russia. What, you think that every hacker that happens to exist in a country is automatically under orders from their government? If they're really good, then they'll just do it under the government's nose. We've, there are hackers in the United States who do the same thing. You think that they wouldn't go after sensitive stuff in China or Russia in order to make a quick buck? Of course they would. It's in their vested interest to do so. It's easy money. Yeah, probably would. And it's, uh, it's uh, less dangerous than hacking your own government systems, I would assume. Because you get found out doing that, you can actually get charged more easily. You know, you hack something in North Korea, who's going to prosecute you? Who gives a fuck? Hack something in China. The, the U.S. government's just going to ignore them if they say they were hacked anyway, probably. So, no charges. Oh, you just got away scot-free. You just embezzled some Chinese money. Probably get a pat on the back and a job offer from Uncle Sam. So, I don't believe that even a little bit. But I think Clinton's a warmonger. 
If anyone's taken in by her, oh, you give peace a chance, oh, we do tough on terrorism, but we need to govern our actions sensibly. Bullshit. Obama hasn't. You won't either. I guarantee that. She'll probably get us involved in at least one more if she's elected. Probably more than one more. We probably will end up, unfortunately, on the ground in Syria. Obama wanted to get us further involved there anyway. It's called mission creep. It's happened before. You think that if we lob missiles into Syria, as Obama and Clinton wanted us to do, that it wouldn't cause retaliation, thus escalating into a ground war? Of course it would. That was the whole point. That's why he wanted to do that. He already had the, the British on board. He had David Cameron on board. Why? Because then you can build a coalition when it's time to invade. And the Republicans wouldn't have stood in his way. They did uh, when it became clear that the people weren't for it. But if he had gotten the chance to just lob a couple of missiles, get the Syrians to fire one of their anti-ship missiles at an aircraft carrier selling, oh, it's like another 9-11, it's like Pearl Harbor, we've got to invade. Oh, America, number one. And then Obama's approval polls would have risen uh, dramatically, actually. Because then he could have said, oh, now I'm strong commander-in-chief of the U.S. Armed Forces. I'm going to go kill us some fucking Muslims over there. It would have been stupid. It would have been, you know, another Iraq. But, you know, he probably would have gotten us involved if he had gotten his way. And make no mistake, Clinton wants the same thing. It's just like the TPP. Clinton wants it. She's already said that she wanted it in her own fucking book that she revised and removed that specific part and nothing else from in the next edition that she released. Uh, of course she's for the TPP. Of course she is. She'll sign it day one if she's elected, probably. Oh, you know, she'll go into the back room in the dead of night and sign it and not tell anybody. Then say, oh, don't worry, I reviewed it. You know, it took me ten minutes. I reviewed it, everything's fine, so I just signed the TPP. All the Democrats should get on board or else they're fucking misogynist because I've got a vagina. That's what she would do. He's a warmonger. She'd probably start a nuclear war. People don't realize how uh, possible it is for one of those to begin. We've been lucky that one hasn't escalated and broken out already. We've already come damn close multiple times. Not just the Cuban Missile Crisis. There have been other situations where things go haywire and just by accident there could be a nuclear war. Well, what happens if we antagonize the Russians too much? I would think that with Russia slowly rusting into non-existence, it'd be a good time to let them continue rusting into non-existence and not continue to antagonize them and give them a reason to drum up patriotic support within Russia so that the people there will actually make do with what they have and rebuild a war infrastructure and then potentially launch the nukes. I would think that'd be a little bit more sensible, and I like to think that the Russians like life as much as we do, and it's unlikely that that's going to happen. But what about the Chinese? Obama's already poking the dragon over there. I happen to side with Russia's adversaries. I happen to think the Philippines and Vietnam and Japan and South Korea and Taiwan have legitimate claims over those waters, or at least chunks thereof. China's obviously pulling an imperialistic move here. That being said, though, once they've already begun building these goddamn islands, what are you going to do about it? You can sail ships next to them. They're obviously not going to fire on a U.S. vessel. They're not suicidal. But at the same time, who's going to force them to leave? Are you going to block shipments to and from these islands? And if so, how are you going to do that? It's just, uh, it's not going to happen. You'd need a huge Asian coalition to make it work. You'd be risking atomic war, number two. Now, Hillary wouldn't do that. She loves the Chinese. Uh, she takes millions of their dollars probably every year. Uh, but as far as Russia goes, yeah, she might have enough sour relations with them to try to screw uh, things over for Putin and, you know, escalate things. Korean Peninsula, yeah, she might be dumb enough to uh, try something there. I think we should just let them uh, collapse on their own and then get involved, but uh, Hillary Clinton apparently thinks that it's gotten worse and worse. Oh, well, there's another provocation. We need to, you know, sanctions aren't working. That's from her own mouth. Sanctions aren't working. Well, what do you think that means? Put it in context. What did she really mean? What she means is that we need a military deterrent. And probably means anti-missile systems in all the surrounding nations, an increased presence on the DMZ. Hmm, that's funny. It costs billions of dollars to do that. Oh, who's going to pay for that? All the taxpayers will. Thankfully, she doesn't have to pay for it herself, now does she? So, that's my uh, thoughts about Clinton's foreign policy bullcrap. It's just a pile of bullshit. That's about all. Peace out.